Hi there, don't forget to subscribe to us and also turn on the bell notification. On the show today, it's Patrick Teo. Hi everyone, welcome to the extended version of the RSS with HD with myself, Rashi Saleh, and of course, Harish Joel. We're not going to waste too much time because this man needs no introduction. He is, oh, I call him a man for all seasons, actually. He's been around for a long time. He's been my mentor, which is why I'm going to keep quiet most of the time and let Harish do all the talking and the interviewing this time around. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Hi, 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 Rashid, and hi, Harish. This is Hello. Rashid starts off by saying, and now, this is Patrick Thiel, and what comes on <laughs> are all these words, and then pictures of Rashid and Harish, and people must be wondering, eh, since when did Patrick have plastic surgery? It doesn't look like any of those things. Well, right at the end, the last montage had your face on it, so, yeah, you just don't get to listen to everything. Hi, Harish. I, no, I, I think um, that's what Rashid meant by men, of, uh, men for all seasons, because you can actually transform. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, yes, uh, Patrick, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you I, I think uh, a lot of people know who you know Patrick Teo is. Um, the so much has been written about Patrick Teo, but I know one thing that they do not know that mm. Harish Diol grew up listening to Patrick Teo, and he was quite a fan. So it's it's quite. You, look, you really don't look old enough for that, Harish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, uh, Rashid is the oldest among the three of us, so let's keep it that way. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> Patrick, now um, let's uh, get into the show, the movement control order. Mm. How's life been for you? Well, I suppose it's been the same uh, for me as for a lot of people all, through, all around Malaysia. I mean, with the MCO, we've all had to stay indoors. I mean, in the condominium where I live, we're not even allowed to... Um, to go and jog or walk around the condominium compound because apparently that's against the, the law. So we have to literally sit at home all day, every day, and, find, and try and find ways of amusing ourselves. I mean, I'm glad I have you guys to do this thing with, and that takes care of an hour or so. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a lot of other people are not as lucky. Uh, so true, but yeah, how, how, how am I dealing with it? I suppose, yeah, that's the way. I mean, the same way as anybody else, I suppose. Some people are quite lucky in that they can work at home. They still have a job to do, so they do their work at home, and that takes care of six or seven hours of their day. And yeah. their day would, well, would appear to be quite normal. But for people like us, it's, yeah, you're right, it's quite difficult. Yeah, and how have you kept yourself busy? Because you have... Uh a show uh, about food, <laughs> and, and th that's been keeping you busy, correct? I was kind of hoping that you wouldn't <laughs> ask that question. Patrick, how are you keeping yourself busy? <laughs> oh, la Harish, busy uh -huh. is actually the word. Uh -huh. <laughs> occupied would be more like it. Okay, mm. occupied and sweating yeah. it out. I presume you've been sweating it out as well. Drink you've been Chinese. drinking drinking Chinese tea. Okay. Yeah. If you believe that, Rashid, you will believe everything I tell you on this show. <laughs> that, which is why I'm keeping quiet. <laughs> okay, how am I keeping myself occupied? Well, okay. um, I still try to do um, to exercise as much as I can. I bought. I recently. I wish I could show you, though, but it's downstairs. Uh -huh. um, I bought a bicycle trainer, so now I'm ah. a bicycle on it, and I. I use it as a, as you would a, a, a stationary bicycle. So I ride that for about 40, 45 minutes. I okay. work out a good sweat. And um, after that, I have my breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, and after I finish my cup of coffee, then the real difficult task begins. The difficult mm -hmm. task meaning that I will then have to try and think of what else to do for the rest of the day. <laughs> this, this 
food program that you talk uh-huh. about, Harish, is not actually yeah. a program like uh-huh. what you guys are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a, a Facebook live broadcast on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. For half an hour from 8.30 to 9 p.m. And um, it's not about anything in particular. It's just it's just a live broadcast to invite people to come on, people mm-hmm. who want to, to come on and say hi and chat about yeah. well, basically what you and I are talking about now, what they've done with their day and uh-huh. how they're handling the MCO and so on. Uh, and as of last Monday, for uh-huh. one of something more interesting to do, I said, hmm, maybe I'll show everybody who's watching on Facebook what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my friend Jeff from Sid's Pubs in Plaza Amansara. Okay. I ordered um, what is known on the menu as a one-pound pork dish. Okay. <laughs> Which consists of five big, fat, juicy pork sausages. Sorry, uh, Rashid, this is not for you. Five sorry, big sorry. pork sausages and uh, a whole plate full of back bacon. Okay. With a, with, a, with a dollop of spicy English mustard. Uh-huh. All washed down with a pint of draft Guinness stout. And I, uh-huh. and I ate that on my Facebook Live broadcast from 8.30 to 9.00. I don't know whether people watching it enjoyed it, but I showed it. <laughs> <laughs> so cruel. <laughs> and today, today is Wednesday, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, today, Wednesday at eight thirty, I've ordered another item from Sid's. Uh-huh. Uh, today, I'm going to be eating cottage pie and a coney dog. So. Okay. So uh, the audience is better watch out for that. 8.30 live on Patrick Teo's page. Yes. He'll be showing you it's cottage pie, pie. Cottage pie, coney dog. And uh, uh, no, today I'm not having a Guinness. I'm having a, a bottle of Tiger Draft. Okay. Patrick. Well, enjoy, uh, yeah. enjoy your meal. Uh, yes, sorry, Rashid. You, you, no. you, you're saying something. Patrick, have you ever, you know, we, you, I know you've written a book and, and I don't know whether it's been, there's been reprinted or not. Uh, mm. the, the book's called Theology. Um, you know, and you've had a lot of things happen since then. Have you ever thought about writing another book uh, to, to keep up to date with what's going on now? Well, um, a lot of people actually, um, people who are more successful uh, writers than me, like my friend, my friend Cam Raslan has said, Patrick, there's no point in just writing one book mm. because the sale from that one book is not going to make you any money. If you, if you want to uh, make writing pay, writing a book pay, I suggest you write at least two books mm. or three or four if you can. Mm. And I've been thinking about it uh, for years now, Rashid, as you know, but. I haven't, I haven't written a second one. I don't know what to write about, lah. But there's so much, so many things to write about, especially people, in what is yeah. happening these days. People tell me what you, what you said exactly, Harish. Uh-huh. You have got so many things to say. What tell stories from the old days and so on and so forth. No, 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 not, not old days. I think the current, uh, uh, your your opinions and views uh, still matter uh, about what's happening today. For example. Well, I, I'm not sure. I want to do that, Harish. Well, I was thinking of writing a story of, uh-huh. of, um, of story of my life, now, so to speak. Okay. But then I thought about it. I'm quite scared, you know. If I write a story of my life, mm-hmm. there'll be a lot of people <laughs> that I have to offend. <laughs> <laughs> which is great, which is fine because it's it's about your life. I mean, I'll 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 I'll, I'll tell you what because um, um, Harish and and uh, Twenty Two Thirteen they actually have a outfit called professional storytellers and they can help you uh, rearrange that and they, they, they do that kind of thing and okay. it's something they can help you with because um, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not promoting you in that sense but they've <laughs> done a very good job with uh, other people in, in the past and uh, you can always you know record it or whatever and they can help you um, you know p- help you publish it because yeah, it's something yeah, that they're, they're very very good at. Actually be a good idea Harish yeah. if mm-hmm. there's a service like that. They do provide. It's just they're so shy of promoting themselves. So I have to do it for them. <laughs> we, we, we like to work behind the scenes. But yeah, yeah we've, we've done work, as what Rashid mentioned, um, with uh, Maips, um, the uh, convention center in Serdang that uh, recently um, was made famous after converting two halls into a COVID-19 hospital within four days. Yeah, so we, we documented 
um, they are what they do um, mm. over the past 10 years. We documented that as well. And we also did a book on Dato Yo Chu Hock, the uh, grandfather of basketball in Asia. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah. see? So, so Yo and Tio, it really works out. I think that's something <laughs> you should really be thinking about. Anyway, the focus is on Patrick right yes. now, <laughs> It is on him. Right. He wants to write a book. Okay, yeah, next did. question, Harish. Yes, uh, okay, uh, based on what you said earlier, um, offending people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I, I followed the career quite closely, uh, to be honest, Patrick, um, you know, from, from listening you to on radio um, to also reading the articles about you offending uh, many people. Uh, you've said things in the past, you've enlightened many, you've also angered many as well. If you could go back and change one thing, would you? Or would you have said something that you have not said? Or would you have not said something you have said? Would you actually go back and change anything at all? Would I go back and change anything at all? Yeah. Um, you're asking me whether I would change anything that I've done. Yeah. In terms of writing or speaking or... Yeah. If that, you think there is a need to. I mean, or do, do you even think there was a need to? The answer is, is no. I wouldn't change anything. There's nothing to change. In fact, if I could go back... Uh -huh. um, uh, and and come and speak or write in in the current uh, with the current um, atmosphere. I would say more. Mm -hmm. Back in those days, as Rashid will might remember, we're not allowed to say as much as we have been allowed to since uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. mm. Correct. Okay. More to say. A lot more should have been said. Should have, have been said. That's all over. So now we deal with new things and we move yeah. forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So um, many people would, those who have read about Patrick Dio would know that he grew up in Ipoh. Yes. Um, he correct me if I'm wrong, but you also sold ice kacang by the roadside at one point of your life. Yes, and, I did with a friend of mine who was my uh, neighbor um, uh, next door. Okay. Uh, we we borrowed an, a tricycle kind of um, uh, stall, right, from uh -huh. and we made um, we made the um, ice kacang stuff, um, put it on the tricycle, and we pushed it to a street corner okay. about a kilometer away from my house, and we 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 set up there and sold ice kacang, but not for very many days though. I think we did it for about a week or so. Okay. <laughs> well, so when, uh, that was productive. <laughs> but, but when you were young, um, and once again, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is based on literature that's out there, yeah? um, mm. you wanted to be either a doctor or a priest simply <laughs> to help others. No, no, no. Uh, not, not simply to help others. I mean, no, I mean as in, you, you, say, you make me look like a saint, which I'm... <laughs> but the reason why I wanted to become a doctor... Uh, because it was because during my days, okay. uh, most parents mm -hmm. want their children to become uh, engineers, architects, or a doctor. I mean, to have a doctor in the house during those days would have made the parents like, you know, go through the roof with pride. Yeah. And but so when when I grew up listening to my mother, especially saying, oh, you should study hard so you can become a doctor. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it and said, if I become a doctor, what, what would be, why would I want to do it? And then the reason uh, I gave myself was because if I was a doctor, I'd be able to sit in a clinic in my office mm -hmm. and listen to um, the problems, medical or otherwise, from the mm -hmm. people who came into my clinic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would be able to talk to them and try and help them. Mm -hmm. That would appeal to me most of all about being a doctor, not curing illnesses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, of course, later on, uh, as I went up to a secondary school in a missionary school, mm -hmm. uh, I thought, hmm, I might want to become a priest mm -hmm. not because I'm again not because I was particularly religious which I'm not mm -hmm. but because I said being a priest a Catholic priest would enable me to sit in a confessional 
and listen to all these people come in and tell me their sins. Yes, I have sinned. Last week I had sex with whatever, <laughs> whatever no, whoever, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but here's the beauty from wanting to listen to anything, uh, uh, you ended up talking a lot on radio. So that's how you. I also listen to people. <laughs> Okay, true. <laughs> but you, you found your fame on radio. I mean, yes, you've done a lot of things from acting, you know, uh, theatre, uh, but you found your fame on radio. Um, my, my final question to you is that how has, actually two questions, how has radio evolved over the years and are you happy with the evolution? Um, radio in Malaysia has evolved the, the way that radio would, I suppose, in a... In a, in a world like ours it just evolves into into um no let me go back during the days when i people like me and yasmin yusuf were on the radio there were only very few radio stations around mm -hmm. um i think english language there was only radio four mm -hmm. so uh time highway for a time yep. mm. yes 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 People listened to radio back in those days mm -hmm. uh, as uh, a form of, um, how should I say this? I think, if I remember correctly, radio back in my days was more, people treated it more as a, uh, um, a friend, you know? Mm -hmm. I turn on the radio because the radio tells me about things that matter to me in my life, you know, what's going on in my community. Mm -hmm. And um, radio back then, I felt, was also a, a tool that people used to communicate with each other, mm -hmm. uh, to tell each other about their joys, their problems, their whatever. Uh, whereas radio now, to me, I feel radio now has evolved into something which is purely for entertainment. Hmm. DJs, the presenters tell jokes, they give away uh, free gifts uh, for competitions, mm -hmm. and that's about it. It never talks about things that really matter in people's daily lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it's evolved. Okay. And that's also the reason why I don't listen to radio anymore, because it means nothing to me. I don't like the music they play because of a generation thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing I don't like about radio now is because it doesn't say anything to make me happy. It doesn't say anything to make me angry. It doesn't make me uh, sad. Mm -hmm. Totally unemotional radio, which I don't like. Understood. All right. Well, you know what? That, that was quite um, well, hey, a speechless already. Twitter and Instagram. Yes. Yes, yes. And Yes, 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 that's your Twitter and Instagram. So, thank you very much, Pat. I mean, um, that was very insightful what you've talked about. Of course, don't f for the audience, don't forget to, uh, uh, to catch him at 8.30 tonight uh, on his uh, Facebook page. Of course, uh, Harish will probably talk to Patrick about the book that he will be writing. And we will, <laughs> if you want Patrick to write, please write in the comments and, and, and let us know what kind of book he should write and the title of the book as well Thank as something you, that we you should do before you know before you. you still got a few years left so i'm not <laughs> going to let you go that easily but uh but thank you very much pat uh for for coming on the show with us thank this you, Wednesday. thank you patrick thank you harish thank you rashid right um for those of you um who uh, don't forget to to catch us also on sundays at 4 p.m i would like to thank amnik our apparel sponsors for for being our sponsors for the show on the RSS and also the RSS with HD Extended and RSS with HD on Sundays. But from Harris and myself, thank you very much. And we'll see you again soon, hopefully this Sunday. <laughs>